We are in the final countdown of this chair upholstery project. And oh my goodness, this has been such a challenge, but it's been so good. If you've missed any of the videos in this series, just go back. I've got a complete playlist listed on my homepage. So make sure that you check that out. I'm gonna have them all in order so you can just go from one step to the next and refer to it anytime that you need to upholster an antique chair that you might find out at a thrift store. In this final phase of this chair upholstery project, we're going to, first of all, attach all of the outside fabric. We're going to do the outside arms first, and then the outside back, and then we're going to do the armrest here, and then we're going to add the trim and the cambric that goes underneath. But we're gonna to try to get that all accomplished in this one video, so it might be a long one. My apologies for that, but we just need to wrap this project up. On the outside arms, we need to measure the widest part, which is this area down here, not this up here. So we're going to measure from this area over here, and we're going to go all the way around, let's see here, to the back of this frame that we've been working so diligently around. And then the next measure that, measurement that you need is from the channel here at the top down to the bottom. Now on both of those measurements, add a couple of inches like we've done on the rest of the chair. You wanna ensure that you have enough fabric. Cut one piece of fabric for that, and that's what I've done here. I'm putting the grain sack stripe on the outside here because I didn't on the inside arm, and I thought it would look kind of cool if I did it on the outside. And while you're cutting your fabric, go ahead and cut a single layer of the batting to go underneath that, that piece of fabric. So we've talked all along about the channel, the, the channel that you use to, uh, to attach your staples. And here you can see on the outside of this, I hope you can see this. Let's see if I can add any texture here to it with this at this angle. So you can see this right here is the channel. It's recessed in. This is where we're going to attach the outside fabric and the outside batting. We're going to do the same right here. This is where it uh, makes into a corner. And then again, down here, we're going to attach it. And then down here, that channel that we we actually already stapled in, we're going to staple right over top of that. And I wanted to mention, it might have been a better idea to staple this last row on the top, not on the side channel, but here on the top. That's okay, we're going to work around that, but just for your own reference, if you have the opportunity to staple on the top, like I did for this staple right here, go ahead and do that because that won't show, but that would give us plenty of room for stapling this outside fabric. I don't think it's gonna be a big problem, we're just gonna work around it. Now let's talk about where we're going to staple on the back of it. So this is the frame, and you can see the channel is right here. On my chair, it kinda comes out a little bit. So when we have that outside arm fabric, it's actually going to get stapled inside here, inside this area here. Remember when we stapled this here and we stapled it to the inside? We're going to do the same thing.
So I just had a little mishap and I'm kind of glad that it happened so that I can show you what to do if this happens to you on any other section in the chair. You'll notice this area right here. I'm just a little above that channel where I wanted to be. I'm not crazy about that. I can feel it. I am just, I'm hitting the wood, but it's just a little too far from the channel. And here's how I know it's too far because my trim, we'll talk more about this trim when we get to it, but this is my trim and it's going to cover over this. And you can see, can you see that? The staples are gonna be visible in that area. So I'm going to add a couple of staples right here. I'm not gonna rip these staples out yet, but I am going to add a couple of staples right here and then I'm going to pull out the ones that will be visible. Alrighty, hopefully I have you close enough but we're going to use this tool. Remember, we used this at the very beginning of the series when we were taking all the fabric out. It's this little pronged tool and it has a chisel edge, which means you can just get under that and lift it up. The danger with this obviously is the fabric. Like you can just imagine, let me go ahead and get this one out of the way, but you can imagine, and hopefully I won't do it here, if I were not very careful, look what ha could happen. I could rip that fabric. And at this point, you really don't want to do that. All right, let's talk about this little area. This is what I'm going to do. I've stapled all the way down to that edge you saw that and then I have this gap and then I can staple here so what I'm going to do is cut these release cuts I know sometimes I've said release and sometimes I've said relief they're kind of the same thing I mean you're releasing the fabric you're giving it some relief it means it's kind of the same thing anyway I'm going to cut that in there that little notch cut away the excess and let's see I can't cut away the excess down here yet So you've been seeing me trim away all the excess with a variety of different scissors. Who knows why? I use several. I love this pair here. I'm going to have these linked. I've also used these. They have a nice little spring action right here. They're nice for arthritic hands. And of course the one pair, this is one of my favorite pairs. I need to replace it. it they're, the blades are so dull, they're not any good. Uh, but I like that they're small and they're easy to use. They just didn't work on this project. And I've also used these scissors, which didn't work out as well. They make nice little snip cuts. So in some respects that did help. I've also seen upholsters, if that's a word, people that reupholster use a blade. And I've never tried that. So if you try that, let me know down in the comments. But what they do to get rid of the excess is just a really sharp utility blade. I'm sure that there's a specific name for it, but I don't know what that name is. If you do, let me know down in the comments. But they just cut away right along that line. So that would probably be much easier, but I'm just using my scissors. I wanted to bring you on the back side of the chair so that you could kind of see what's going to happen on this side. So this is the, the back. This is the outside back. This is the frame and this right here, can you tell, that is the inside of the frame. This is the outside part of it. This is the inside and it's the same place where we attach that little, remember the little bits that we had to pull through, we had to do all those cuts and then we had to pull that through. So that's, that's where we're going to staple it. Here we're on the side of the chair. So we have all this excess and the batting and then there's the frame. It's going to wrap all the way around. Look how nice and neat that's going to look along that edge. And we want this to go out and under because that outside back is going to be attached there. And then we're going to pull it all the way around and it's going to be stapled on the inside here. Now, one thing I did not mention when I was stapling here and I was giving it just a slight tug, you wanna make sure if you have a stripe pattern, don't pull it so tight that it 
puts a little warble, kind of like I did on the inside back. Remember I had a little mishap there? Um, you just want to be careful of that. And the same thing here. So watch what happens if I pull it too tight. Can you tell? I don't know if you can tell from that angle, but it's kind of giving it a little, a little bit of a warp. And we don't want to do that. You want it firm, but not tight. Like I've said, taut, but not tight. Here it is. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? I'm really loving that. And you might notice that I left this little tail here and I did not staple between here. That's because when I pull down the backing, when I put that outside back on, I'll catch it then and I'll leave this to hold on to. And then around here, I didn't get real close because when I put the backing piece on, I'll be able to get that, you know, I'll catch it then. You can see I've got it stapled on the inside of that piece right there all the way down and I had quite a bit of bulk down here to work with so I had to really press my staple gun in there but I've got it it's all nice and caught I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and then it's going to be the back Alrighty, let's talk about what we're going to do in this area where we cannot staple. So we've stapled all the way to here, and you can see that lines up here. Remember our channel stopped right there, so we can't go any farther. And the side, outside arm, we had pulled around and folded and stapled, stapled into the inside of this. So we have that nice clean line. We still have this to take care of. We have the batting from the outside back and of course the fabric. So my plan is to cut a relief cut or release cut, whatever word I'm using now, relief cut right here. And then of course all this will be trimmed away. But that will allow this section to be folded in. I tested it out with the batting and I folded it kind of similar to what we did to the inside back when we folded that area 
and I folded it and I kind of tested it out and I don't like it it's it's thick and I don't like the way that that looks you can probably see how that is I just don't like that it's that it's like that so what I'm going to do is trim away the batting and then I'm going to fold this fabric in let's pretend like that's not there we'll get to that in a minute and when it gets folded it'll be a flatter line and I can either use a hand stitch to stitch it up like it is that's the way that it's done on the original chair or I could run the trim all the way down that's an option or I might glue it I don't know because there's no pressure here on the back of this chair you're not really going to have any pressure so it's, it's kind of a toss up there of what to do. If, if you are an upholsterer and you see a better way to do this, please mention it in the comments. I would appreciate that. I'm just doing it the way that I do it. All right, let's go ahead and start with some of the cuts. I'm going to cut here first, and I'm basically going to cut this area using this as my guideline. fold of the batting lines up with the edge of that frame. Remember how we wrapped it around? You have to feel that, but the fold of this batting is right along that edge, and I think that's going to create a soft transition from the back to the front. It's fine, just like that. I could probably, in fact, I think I will. I'm gonna keep that folded and stick a little staple right there if I, okay, I need about three more hands. We're going to do that and I'm going to stick just a little staple inside just like we stapled how we wrap that fabric around. I'm just going to stick one little staple there to hold it. What I want to do is have this fold to basically come down to line it up with this edge of the leg. Although that's a little close for comfort because it only comes to here. So if I were to do that, we're gonna do it in reverse. Of course, this will be folded on the inside, but let me just show you what's happening here. If I fold it this way, do it there, then it is awful close to that edge and I'm not crazy about that. Fold is going to look nice once it's pulled taut and all of that, but that's a little close for comfort. Comfort. So I think instead of aiming for this edge, I'm actually going to use the center of the leg as the point from here to here. I don't know the verbiage for that, so forgive me for that. But I want to have a straight line from this point down to the center of this leg. So what I will do, you got to work with me because I still have this piece here. I don't want to staple all this down. I'll get that here in the end. So what I'm going to do is have the fabric folded to about the halfway point of that leg. And then once that's stapled down, going to hold it nice and snug. I'll put another staple right there. And that should, when it's all folded in, that should lay nice and snug right there. I can press that with an iron. I could, like I said, use a hand stitch and stitch it, or I could glue it, tuck in some glue in there. We'll, we'll see. I might wind up hand stitching it. The more I think about it, the more I like the idea of it being hand stitched. So I might do that there. All right, so that's what we're going to do. I can see about where I'm going to fold it. I can see I have a lot of excess. I'm going to trim away some of that excess just to get it out of my way. When you're working on areas like this, it's really important to just think it through the very best that you can before you actually start using the staple gun. It's just hard to pull those staples out. So you just wanna think through the process before you get there. So I think I have it. So I'm going to fold this towards the inside with my target, my target area being about halfway of this leg. So if I follow that line up, that's going to be about right there. I'm feeling it to make sure I don't have any thick areas that I don't wanna work around. And you can see, all right, so I'm just going to see, where's my clamp? grab a clamp. There it is. These clamps, by the way, have really come in handy for a project like this. All right, so they're acting as an extra hand in, in a lot of ways for me. So I'm going to, oh, I can't get that around there. Well, I guess I'm not going to use a clamp. There's, it's too big right there. Exactly where I want it. It's pulled nice and snug. I don't feel any big, thicky bulk areas right there. I'll just hold that and I'm going to put one more staple. Make sure everything's tucked in. I'm going to staple it right here.
Now it's time to upholster the little arm sections. Initially I had said that I might paint the area and not reupholster it, but you can see here that it curves down, the wood is really rough, the channel is very obvious all along here, so there's no way I could have just painted that. So of course I'm going to upholster it and I wanna show you step by step what I'm going to do to cover this area. The first thing that I did was I took a piece of um, scrap foam big enough to cover this area, made sure that I had enough to go from the front to the back I'm not doing overhang because that would be too much bulk. Also, the extra foam that I had is one inch and that was just too much here. So what I did was I cut down the thickness of that foam by just taking my scissors and kind of roughly, <laughs> you can kind of see, I'm kind of going right in the middle there. This is a little section and it made two halves like that. So I could use one for one side and one for the other, and that way I have a little scrap that's only a half inch thick. Three layers, we have the foam, and this channel, by the way, is not as deep as it has been on all the other places. So we really have to be careful here. And I will point out something on the other side. I don't see it here, but on the other side, the original upholstery actually got stapled several times in the decorative part. So even the professionals make some errors. So don't worry too much about it. But let's cut away some of this excess. You can see that I've got two layers. I don't need that. So on the undermost layer, let's go ahead and get rid of some of that excess. And what we're going to do is at the, about the center points, so I've got each end tacked, we're going to do some tax staples right along this channel. So you really have to feel for that. And we're going to pull that down. I don't wanna pull it too much because right now nothing is holding that on the other side, but I am going to pull it down taut and I'm going to find the middle spot approximately and put my first tack staple right in there and you really have to feel that with your finger. And notice also, I'm not just pulling down like this, I'm kind of pulling down and away to try to keep that as nice and tight as possible. I don't wanna wind up with a little fold in there and I'm trying to avoid that. I want to pull it taut, not tight. I don't want to have ripples, but I also don't want it to be loose. Now I must admit, this feels uncomfortable doing this stapling like this. So if, if you need, lay the chair all the way down. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's lay it all the way down. All right, let's talk about this area right up here. This is gonna be a well-used area, so you wanna pay close attention here especially. Right now we only have one staple. We really can fit three staples all the way across, so two more on each side as I feel the area where I can get to. I know I can fit two more staples, so I'll do that first. We're in the home stretch, like major, major home stretch of this upholstery project. So the next step is to add the trim. But before we do that, I, I need to do something about these little seams here. I mentioned that, they're, remember they're loose. We folded that back. You can either use a curved needle and do a whip stitch that would hide, you do it with the same color of whatever your fabric is. You could whip stitch that on and you could do it that way. That's the way that the original chair was done or you could do this way. Remember, there's not gonna be any pressure here. You don't sit on this part of the chair, this is the outside. 
I'm going to glue it. I know that sounds crazy. I said at the beginning that I wasn't going to. I think I said that. I don't know if I did. Anyway, I'm going to glue it. And I wanted to point out something here. See here, when I folded this side back, it didn't happen on the other side, but on this side, I didn't pull it quite taut enough and I have some ripples. So when I glue this part here, I'm going to just pull it tight. Look what happens. They just pull right out. So I'm going to pull that a little bit tight, stick some glue way in there and get it to hold that way. If you're not comfortable with something like that, you could do the curved needle stitching with a heavy thread. Go right ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I've got my glue gun loaded. By the way, do not buy four inch glue sticks Buy the eight inch. These four inch run out so fast and they're just a pain in the rear end. So this is what I have for now. I'm going to use my finger to lift this up, get a little bit of hot glue back there, and then really quickly pull this over until it's, until it, before it cools off. Let's just get that done here. It seems like a lot's going in there, but it's not because it's a dumb four inch stick. Back to the trim. It's this jute braided trim. I buy it um, on Amazon. I will have it linked down below. It's really a pretty trim. Pick out the trim that will go with whatever fabric you chose. This is a rustic grain sack, very farmhouse country kind of feel to it. So this jute trim goes perfectly with it. And we're going to glue it on right over top of all of those staples. This part is so satisfying. So when you start, think about where you want to start. I'm on the back of the chair. These are the back two legs. That's the front leg up there. I'm going to start back here. And when I start to glue, I'm not going to start gluing at the end. I'm going to start gluing and leave a tail hanging so I have something to work with when I get to that point. And this is kind of a no brainer. Actually, I'm going to go the other direction because I'm right-handed. So I will leave the tail. Let me bring you over here. I'm right-handed and this, so I'm gonna start on this side because I'm right-handed and that actually is going to work. Work better because you have to be able to maneuver it easily. Got my glue gun handy, my roll of trim, plenty of glue sticks and my scissors just in case I need to trim off a little bit that maybe I missed initially. Got my glue gun ready. And I'm just going to move around this in small sections. Remember, I'm going to leave the tail and I'll deal with that at the very end of all of this. And I'm at the back corner, back leg of this gorgeous armchair. Let's talk about how we're going to go around this 90 degree angle here. First, I'm going to make sure that I have the excess trimmed off. I don't want to deal with a bunch of bulk right here. Get rid of all that I can. And I'm going to dry, do a little dry fit first. So I'm going to hold this and I'm kind of squeezing this together and pushing it in. And my goal is to get it to fit fit in there about like that. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's do it again with hot glue without burning ourselves.
trim and we're going to stuff it down there as far as we can and then we're just going to try to get the glue down as far as we can without getting it all over the fabric. Alrighty, we are really getting down to the wire and I gotta tell you, I'm beat. I am just beat. This has been a lot of work, but I do have enjoyed it a lot. Two last things that we have to do. By the way, there's actually three. See that right there? It looks like a great big pillow. I made like a pillow cushion for this chair. I'm not going to be going over that, but I will be sharing a blog post that will teach you how to make a boxed cushion, a fitted cushion. I'm not sure the term for that, but I'm going to share a link about how to make that for your chair. If your chair is the kind that has a cushion, I just went with a pillow option. I don't know if you are interested in seeing a tutorial for that. I possibly can do that in the future because I do have another chair to recover. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know down in the comments if you are interested in the pillow in the pillow version of this cushion that I made for it. I'll show you the, the full reveal here in a second. Back to the chair with two things to do. We have to steam out some of the wrinkles that are in the fabric and I'll show you how to do that. It's super simple. And then we're going to put the, um, let's see, can you see this? It's going to be underneath here. It's called the, it's called cambric or the dust cover. It's that black stuff that goes underneath. And I already have that. It's super simple. It's just stapling all stapling it onto the underside of the frame. And at this point, you're really good with your pneumatic staple gun. So you got this. In the meantime, let's just steam. The reason that we steam the fabric after we've upholstered the chair is to kind of fill out the areas. It's a, of course to smooth out any wrinkles that might be in the fabric, but also to plump up the under layer of that batting. Let me show you. This is, there we go. This is a piece of the batting. So you can tell when this was packaged, it was all folded up and tight in the package and then sent to me and it got really wrinkled. You can see all the wrinkles here. So you just take that steamer and be careful. These steamers really put out a lot of heat, but watch this here as it just puffs right up. I hope you can tell. Ouch, that's hot. <laughs> okay, can, yes, you can see the thickness difference. I hope you can. Right here where I steamed is much thicker and puffed up and no wrinkles. Right here where I did not steam, it's just flatter. So when we do this over the seat, that's basically what we're doing is smoothing out the fabric and any wrinkles that might be there, but we're also puffing up the batting, which is helping to fill it all out really nice and full. This is the cambric. I just cut off a piece big enough to uh, make sure that I can cover all the areas. And of course I've cut off extra. It's also called a dust cover. I'm going to have it linked in my Amazon store. And that link is down below. If you buy it like five yards at a time, something like that, I don't remember. Anyway, you wanna make sure that you've got all your areas covered. We're going to start by just stapling a couple of tack staples up here. And then we have to cut around the legs. I'm going to show you the chairs, but no judgment here on my house because listen, all I've been doing is reupholstering that chair and practically nothing else. So my house is a wreck, but you know what? Honestly, we live here and we like it cozy. And sometimes that means it's messy. Anyway, let's take a look at those two chairs over there a little bit closer. Okay. Here's the back side of the two chairs. Remember how we started out with the red chair, like you see there on the right. And this is where we ended up. Look at this. It's, oh, I'm loving this, our new chair. And here they are from the front. So that was 
the chair that we started out with really beautiful but that fabric was dry rotted you saw how what bad shape it was in and here's what we have now so you see that the cushion that I made is a pillow style it's super comfy I've just been sitting on it so comfy I love this pillow style to me it adds a real casual kind of look to this chair and I love that I might do something about the corners I haven't decided but see how they poke out right here I might take a little couple of hand stitches and just stitch it back just like that. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Should I just leave it real casual like that? Should I tack those little corners down? I don't know. Let me know what you think. And that cushion is in comparison with a standard box cushion, which is what it, the chair came with. It's a little more of a formal look for sure. Ignore the color, but it's a little more formal with that kind of cushion. I wanted a more relaxed kind of look. Now, to, if you wanna make that box cushion, I'm going to have a blog post link below from my friend Karen, the slipcover maker. She's the expert at making slipcovers, which means she's also the expert at making cover cushions for boxed cushion seats like you see there. I hope you really enjoyed this whole video series. It was a labor of love, but look at the, look at the results. It's just really amazing. If you enjoyed this video series, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We have lots more to tutorials coming your way. And if you ever need to refer back to this because you might find one of these chairs while you're out thrifting or yard sailing or at an auction, make sure that you save this so that you can refer back to it. It is basically a class right here on YouTube to learn how to reupholster a chair just like that. I'll be writing a blog post for that second chair that I'll be upholstering here over the coming weeks. It'll be a little while, but if you're interested in that, you can sign up below. Down in the description, I'm going to have a link where you can sign up for my email email you can join my list and watch and see all of my blog post tutorials we have well over 200 tutorials over there I know that you're just going to love them thanks so much for sticking with me through this whole series Barkley and I really do appreciate it hey we'll see you next time